Here we're going to talk about using fiber paper rather than the RC paper that we've been using until now. And the main reason for using fiber paper is permanence. The RC paper is very susceptible to um, pollutants in the air and um, acidity. You can see that yellow line along the edge there is caused by contact with an acidic mat board and the whole area that was exposed to light has turned yellow and it's hard to see on this video but you can see plating where the black has actually turned the silver. The main difference here between using the fiber paper rather than the resin coated paper is the processing times. The fiber paper needs the two minutes in the developer, two minutes in the fixer, and it needs to wash for one hour rather than five minutes. This one hour washing takes place in this vertical washer, which we'll have set up when we're doing fiber prints. The idea of this washer is it has individual compartments for each print so water can flow around the front and back without the prints sticking together. And also it has a vertical configuration which allows the heavy metals to sink to the bottom and it kind of flushes out from the top and the bottom. You'll need to rinse your print off in the normal siphon tray just to get the fixer rinsed off so we don't splatter it all over this uh, washer. You don't need a lot of water flowing through this. You just want to make sure that there's a little stream of water coming over the top here. The fiber paper is kept in a separate paper safe and the speeds on the RC paper and the fiber paper are usually either identical or very close. So instead of wasting all this time processing 8x10 fiber tests, you can actually make your test strips and test prints on the RC paper and then at the final moment substitute in the fiber paper and then inspect your RC print and your fiber print to make sure they have the same densities. Another issue with the fiber paper is because it's on a paper base rather than a polyester base, it tends to um, curl a lot and wrinkle a little bit. So the counteract that we use our dry mount press to flatten it. Um, this is a device that was in the olden days was used to wax um, attach prints to cardboard but we're just using it here basically as an iron. So what you want to do here is turn the thing on with that switch at the top. It's going to be turned up to a temperature of about 250 degrees, but you want it to be more at 200 degrees, so you need to watch that thermometer to make sure it's working right. You can place two 8x10 prints side by side in here, but you definitely only want to do two at a time. Put them between two cardboards, and then make sure that they're not dog-eared or anything, and then clamp this thing down and leave them in there for about 45 seconds or so. Now you pull your prints out and you want to put them face to face and then what works out good is to just stick them in a heavy book for about, well as long as you can really, but overnight seems to really help flatten them out. They also can be placed back to back in an archival sleeve and if they're stored that way it really helps keep them flat. 